I'm very excited today to be having a discussion with Dr. Janesse Cates. She's a researcher in the VA and has recently published a paper entitled Influence of Provider Gender on Mental Health Stigma. And we will be discussing stigma in the mental health field and how that affects patient outcomes. Um, so first off, I just want um, to know how you got into this field, how you decided to work in mental health and as well as just research in general. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so I'm a licensed clinical psychologist um, and I, um, I studied sociology and psychology in undergrad. Um, so it's been, I've started getting interested in mental illness um, and, and kind of mental health um, way back before um, undergrad. My um, parents are in primary care, but I kind of have a history of like family and healthcare providers. And um, this was kind of my own twist on being a healthcare provider um, in an area that I, I found really interesting, just like how do people work and um, human behavior. So that's how I went that route. And I first got my master's in mental health counseling and wanted to keep going, wanted to keep doing research, especially um, really passionate about um, research that um, really helps to improve care and systemic research has kind of been the thread throughout my work. Um, so then I got my PhD in clinical psychology um, and I've been working, training and um, working at um, the VA different uh, VA hospitals for the past three years now. Um, so I did my, my final clinical training there. Um, and I'm actually now doing um, a research postdoc um, with the VA. Um, so that's kind of the, the history, but I really just wanted to help people um, and really kind of understand human, human behavior more. And now the more that I've gotten into it, really interested in um, how do we make the healthcare system better for people. Yeah, okay. Um, do you find like conducting research out of the VA has like a lot of benefits or is it kind of just different than because it is kind of a controlled group? Yeah, I mean, there are definitely pros and cons. I really like that about the VA, that it is a kind of closed system and that you have researchers and clinicians that really have, um, I think, a, a bigger kind of stake and more say in like what happens in some ways as opposed to like just outside, it feels like, okay, we've got to fix like the whole thing. But like yeah. in VA, it's like, all right, we're just focusing on VA and how to make our care better. Um, but I, I do think a lot of the things that we're working on at the VA are really applicable, um, both in terms of providers and the healthcare system, but also our population. Um, mm -hmm of veterans uh, that are really, you know, coming to us in the mental health clinic or various other services that we have for pretty much the same, many of the same issues as outside, um, you know, addiction, substance use, depression, anxiety, we see all of it. Right, right. Yeah. So it's nice to have a body of research that's like closed, but also applicable. That's yeah, I think it's definitely applicable. Yeah. Outside. And I'm sure in the VA, but as well as in the larger scheme of things, there are a lot of, um, like you talk about in your paper stigma, but there's a lot of challenges to overcome in the mental health space and doing research in the mental health space. Have you mm -hmm. found that challenging to overcome or do you think that working in a system like the VA, it's, it's you know, easier to overcome these hurdles? Yeah, I mean, I guess I think in general, mental health is is something that it's not necessarily prioritized. So it might be harder to get funding, but I, I do think in that way, the VA is one of the leaders in that because um, there is such a focus on mental health and you know there is the funding there for that mm -hmm. research. Yeah, okay. So that's, I mean, good that they're focusing on that. Yeah, um, for sure. Mm -hmm. What's the like structure of your lab? Is it like a normal like PI postdoc? Oh. 
I wouldn't even really call it a lab. So oh, okay. this, um, yeah, um, it's, we're kind of similar to academia, but not that academia in terms yeah. of the structure of things. Some, and that varies across VAs. So I get the sense that some VAs might be more focused on labs or um, most investigators have an academic affiliation too. So they might have a lab at their university um, where they have students and stuff, but at the VA, um, so the work that I did with Irene Harris, who's the senior author on this paper around stigma, um, that was something she's part of um, what's called the MIREC. And oh gosh, <laughs> like, I'm probably going to need to look up that acronym, but it's basically the VA's research arm that's focused specifically on clinical research for mental illness. So it's like mental illness, M I R E C C, mental illness research, something, something center. Um, you get it. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, she works for MIREC and she, and then she specifically works for the New England, we call it Vision One because the VA is broken up into regions and New England is Vision One. Um, so the Vision One MIREC, but that's a whole bunch of researchers doing different things and they have, there'll be PIs and there'll be projects, but there's a, I think I get the sense that most VI research centers, there's a lot more like collaboration between investigators and less of the like lab lines. Okay. Um, especially now I've actually moved into as a, a as sort of a another branch uh, besides the MIREC, the VA also has uh, what's called health services research. So that's specifically the research arm that's on, um, you know, how the healthcare system runs. So quality, um, all that kind of stuff, coordination of care. Uh, so that's what I've kind of moved into. And again, I'm working with a few investigators in there um, and doing some of my own projects. So do you get to drive like your own questions? Like when you have a question, you decide what you're gonna publish on and that kind of thing and then get people on board? Yeah, I sometimes it can work that way, um, especially in health services research in the VA, you still have to apply for grants and all of that. So that mostly determines like what kind of projects that you're working on. Um, so they have a route for um, investigator initiated research so the you put in a grant for your question that you want to work on but there's also a lot of people doing research partnered getting money and partnered with um va central office so va leadership um you know wants wants a treatment for whatever it is and so they'll um basically fund researchers to do that without you kind of formulating your idea okay so that's something kind of unique about the va yeah yeah. So what would you say the overarching like question was for the, like that got this paper published? I'm sure it was part of a suite of papers. Yeah. And so this project was actually not even technically research. Um, it was needs assessment and um, considered under quality improvement. Okay. Um, so that was um, basically an initiative to um, assess and then um, pilot and intervention specifically to target stigma, mental illness related stigma in, in our mental health providers. Okay, so yeah, yeah that makes sense. Um, so do you think within now moving towards this paper more specific, mm -hmm. um, do you think that there is like a possibility of with increased oversight or something like that, that each provider could decrease the discrepancy of stigma or something? Or you know, stigma in general, or do you think it's, it needs to be more on a meta scale? Um, I think that it's probably a combination of both. <laughs> it's probably always my answer yeah, is yeah. both, but um, I do think when we come across these, for me, I think this is more my sociology coming in than psychology, but when we see patterns and the fact that this isn't really an individual issue, um, because we see it across people. So yes, individual, even group interventions can be helpful, but we're kind of talking also about a cultural shift in some ways. So I think, um, 
you know, that often has to come from a group, uh, a group building awareness or kind of this cultural shift over time. Yeah. So you think awareness is the first step, like understanding that even doctors have this stigma will push back. Yeah. I don't, that makes sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but on a, like you said, obviously it can't change on an individual scale on the provider side, but do you think that there are things that patients can do to specifically make sure they're getting unbiased care? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, I think for any patient, I would recommend, you know, making sure that you feel comfortable, making sure that you have a good fit with your provider. I think a lot of that is feel, and I, I don't think that would be any different, um, you know, in terms of this research or other types of research, just making sure that you feel comfortable um, with that provider. And I think there are a lot of resources out there already in terms of that sort of thing from a diversity perspective about kind of what questions to ask your, if you're a person of color, what questions to kind of ask your white provider, or um, if you're LGBTQ, what questions to ask your provider. I think along a lot of those lines, I think making sure to ask good questions, mm -hmm. questions that are important to you, um, and really make sure that, especially with mental health, that you, that it's a good fit. Um, I think that's important. And I don't think a lot of people do that. They think it's just like, okay, I got this person and yeah. they're going to be my therapist, but um, that's an important piece. Yeah, so coming equipped with like a set of like a script would it really help structure and get Yeah, them? at the very least thinking about what would be important to you and what kind of you know what kind of uh you know biases you want to maybe check for in your provider. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you think the root of these stigmas in provider care as well as just in the general population but obviously that's not what you study. Um, it, what do you think the root of that stigma like comes from? Yeah, I think, um, I think it is coming from the same place likely because we do see that, you know, with this research and other research that this level of stigma in mental health providers is pretty similar to the general population. So mm -hmm. I think it's really this larger cultural views about mental illness. Um, and, um, and I think that's stemming from, um, you know, it's really hard to say. It's probably where yeah. a lot of these things stem from, which is a sort of natural tendency. This in-group, out-group tendency, I think, has been, um, you know, talked about as being part of those sorts of things. Um, and the tendency to make these snap, you know, our brains have to take shortcuts all the time. And so um, stereotypes are, are a way that that shows up. Um, and so really all of us slowing things down, building that awareness, being in contact with different people. I think mental health providers have that responsibility too, to be breaking down that stigma and saying, you know, this, these stereotypes about people with mental illness aren't true. And really, I think a key message of this paper and a lot of the work that Dr. Harris has been working on is that the mental illness is really a spectrum. There isn't a, these are the people with mental illness and these yeah. are the people without, and these are providers, you know, we all may um, face mental health challenges. We're very likely to face mental health yeah. challenges at some point in our life. Um, so to, to say, to act like, okay, this is a scary group of people is just not accurate. So breaking down those stereotypes, I think is part of our responsibility. Yeah, I definitely think that awareness is a big part of that. Like, you know, making people aware that everyone suffers. <laughs> I mean, like things happen, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Do you think that that's getting better? Do you see in society that we're getting more accepting or do you think it's kind of like a feedback loop where you know, stigma makes mental health worse and then worse mental health makes more stigma. Or is um, it both? <laughs> yeah, probably both. Okay. I, yeah, I don't know if I could say, if I could speak to that. <laughs> okay. But yeah. um, I'd like to think it gets better. Yeah, it, yeah. And it's hard because, you know, society progresses, but there's also the equal and opposite side of everything. Right. Yeah. 
So how do you think, I mean, obviously you touched on it generally, but how do you think specifically your paper um, is applicable to the broader society as well as like other care providers? Mm, mm -hmm. Well, I think one of the things that's really interesting to me about this work that we did um, is that often the, you know, not just in terms of mental health providers, but a lot of the kind of diversity education and all that stuff that we're seeing nowadays, it, it often focuses on the oppressed group, the quote unquote okay. oppressed group. Yeah. So in terms of gender, we're often focusing on women and the barriers they face, the disparities there, which is important. And at the same time, we also have to be focusing on that other side of it, which is, you know, what we talked about a bit in this paper is that um, how men specifically are involved in kind of policing other men, that there are also stereotypes um, and things that men in this gender, um, you know, stereotyped world have to adhere to. And that, you know, men may also be involved in kind of policing those um, those stereotypes. Mm -hmm. As well as like, if you put it on that side of the table, you're not like putting the burden of it onto the people who are affected by exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 But then at the same time, also acknowledging that these systems often affect, um, you know, the, the non-oppressed group in certain ways too, that we aren't always thinking about. Yeah. That's, that is true. Like the toxic masculinity mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. you know, pep perpetrated by men, but also hurts them. That makes sense. Yeah. No, that's, yeah. Because yeah, I think this kind of goes back to some of the outcomes that we see that men are more, less likely to seek mental health care because those, mm -hmm. um, you know, stereotypes about getting help, about being, about needing help are, are there. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like that makes it so extreme because once they seek care, it's such an extreme level of, you know, problem. It might yeah. be worse off than if they had just had no stigma in the first place. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's fair. That's very fair. So our final question is a very broad question that you don't have to have an exact answer to, but um, we like to ask if there was one thing in this field that you could change or fix or anything like that, what would it be? Oh my gosh. There's so much that I would <laughs> yeah. do on that. Um, what? <laughs> to say in that um I would I would make healthcare in general a universal right and including mental health care yeah. so that they're um just remove as many barriers to access as we possibly can and I think that would actually help with the stigma as well the more it's easy to do and the more you know people are doing those kinds of things openly the better yeah yeah I think that that is very important that more people would seek care if they could. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, that's very fair. Are um, people from the VA, is, they, or is it generally a wide range of socioeconomic class or is it very like, is it low income frequently or is? Yeah, it's mostly low income, which is one of the things that I didn't know going into the VA, but that was one of the things that made me stay on because I was always passionate about providing care to people who didn't have um, necessarily other access uh, and who are low income. And the VA really provides health care and mental health care for people who would not be able to access it otherwise. Um, so I love that about it. Yeah, that's, I mean, that is good to hear. I mean, I think it's very important when I think expanding resources in that sense would be super beneficial. Mm -hmm. 